Clutter is one of the most annoying parts of owning a TV. Unless you have a nice cave-like room, you'll almost always have to consider the placement of your TV in relation to windows and light sources. In the past few years, big brands like Samsung and even Hisense have released more and more models with matte screen finishes, intended to eliminate this glare problem. But such is the classic case of whack-a-mole with product design, matte screen finishes eliminate the glare problem and introduce another one. One that hasn't been tested for until now. Black Level Rays. Hi, I'm Abby from Ratings.com, where today we'll look at our new reflections test. From one single box to four in-depth tests, our updated reflections testing suite hopes to shed light on what trade-offs you'll be making when selecting a screen finish. Our old reflections test had a pretty glaring issue that became even more glaring in 2024 when Samsung put a matte finish on their flagship model. Regardless of how you personally feel about that decision, it is good at fighting glare. Compared to its competitors, the LG G4, Sony A95L, or even the Samsung S90D, it reduces the reflections much more significantly. But you wouldn't know that based on our scores. Even outside of our test conditions, putting the top reflection score, the LG G4, and the Samsung S95D beside each other, the differences are perceptible. The G4 is like a mirror, but the S95D doesn't reflect anything distinct back. So what gives? How could the results in our testing not line up with what is visually apparent? When light falls onto the screen, it does one of three things. Gets reflected back, diffused across it, or absorbed. Previously, we measured reflections using a luminance meter pointed inside of this modified integrating sphere. While this approach was certainly more scientific in its foundation, there was a disconnect between the results, the pictures we took, and the user experience. We'll show you what we mean. The integrating sphere allowed us to capture the total amount of light that gets reflected from the TV screen relative to the base amount of light from the light source inside the sphere. Also, through our modifications, we were able to measure the amount of light diffused across the screen. In the case of the S95D, we measured that 2.1% of all light falling on the screen gets reflected back to the luminance meter. Almost all of that light gets diffused, which makes sense. That's how matte screen finishes work, by diffusing light. Though that number seems small, when compared to the glossy finish of the G4, it's almost quadrupled the amount of light spread across the screen. And it's a pretty big jump from the barely reflective LG C4. Now that's the math that caused the discrepancy in the scores, to a certain extent. There's also just the fact that both the G4 and C4 are really good at handling reflections and the fact that matte screens tend to reflect more total light back in general because they diffuse more light in general. Regardless of what those numbers say, the S95D doesn't have many visible artifacts. However, that diffused light becomes a problem for contrast, as it raises the black levels of the TV. So if you're watching something in the broad daylight, nary a curtain to be seen, the image lacks that dynamic pop, since the blacks take on a gray-purple tinge. This observation is what got us to open the can of worms that was our reflections test. What the S95D highlighted was that it didn't make sense to have only one score for reflections. We were making a judgment call for you on what was more important in reflection handling, and assuming it was just how much light bounces back. Our new suite of tests aims to fix that by breaking each of those components into its own dedicated methodology. So you can decide for yourself what's more important depending on your setup. You can make the choice whether you're more distracted by reduced contrast or the silhouette of the plant on your windowsill. So how did we do all that? The short answer is, with great effort. The long answer was to first change our entire philosophy on reflections and what they entail, and then redevelop our methodology from there. Reflections aren't just about the screen finish and how that interacts with light from the environment. It's about how that interaction then interacts with the other functions going on in the TV at the same time. The black level rays phenomenon that made the Samsung screen finish so controversial is emblematic of this philosophy. Sure, no glare, but at the cost of contrast, which on an OLED seems like it defeats the purpose. And for non-OLEDs with a matte coating, like Hisense is the canvas, well, its already terrible contrast looks even worse when watching content next to a bright window. The trade-off being that you can actually see what you're watching, though. Ultimately, we had to tease apart the various aspects of reflection handling to core areas that needed further investigation. We settled on four new tests. Direct reflections, total reflected light, ambient black level rays, and ambient color saturation. Our updated setup retires the integrating sphere in favor of some newer recruits. 
yeah, the two main pieces of equipment we're using for our tests are a camera, calibrated to mimic the human eye as it perceives light, and a ring light, calibrated to consistently output a thousand lux. We take a couple shots of the TV, but the most important one is this one. That is the wrong picture. It's this one, where the ring light photo generates the graph that you see here, which shows you the intensity of the light the camera detected across the center of the screen. The double humps directly correlate to where the rings are visible on the screen. With a matte screen, you can only see a single hump, as the intensity of the light returning to the camera is consistently higher for a wider span. The higher the peak, the more reflective the screen is. From that ring light photo, we also get the data for the total reflected light across the whole screen. Essentially, this is a heat map of the ring light picture that identifies in gradations all reflected light, direct, diffused, or diffracted, to give you a better sense of how the screen interacts with light in general. The third test is the ambient black level rays. We're still using a camera and a ring light, but this time we add a colorimeter to the setup to measure the baseline black level of the TV with a black slide, then turn the ring light on to see what happens to the black levels in the presence of light. Because of where the colorimeter is in the rig, we're not measuring the halo of light emitted from the ring light, we're measuring that center part, where the diffused light falls. And here is where we find some interesting results. For the most part, there's a solidly inverse relationship between direct reflections and ambient black level rays. As in, the better a screen is at handling direct reflections, the more black level rays it tends to have. In cases like the Sony Bravia 3, it has virtually no black level rays. But the screen is so reflective that it even reflects the background of your room if it's a light color. This might seem like just a matte versus glossy distinction, and it is, for the most part, but not absolutely. Even the G4 suffers from a degree of black level rays, not from its screen finish, but from what appears to be light scattering on its brightness boosting MLA layer. Since that layer works like a series of microscopic reflectors to begin with, light hitting the screen gets scattered across it. You can really see the difference that MLA layer makes when you compare the G4 to the C4, or the Panasonic Z95A to the Z85A. Interestingly though, the LG C4, Panasonic Z85A, and Sony Bravia 8 all outperform their QD OLED counterpart, the Samsung S90D, when it comes to ambient black level rays. Again, it isn't as straightforward as QD OLEDs are worse than W OLEDs. The headline here is that W OLEDs use a circular polarizing layer to ensure that light emitted from the OLED layer doesn't get reflected back to you by the metal plate the layer is built on. Ultimately, while this circular polarizer ensures that reflections are neutralized without raising black levels, they reduce the brightness output of a TV by about 50% which requires compensation from the OLED layer to drive brightness. So you get to maintain your OLED level contrast by asking the OLED pixels to deliver more. Now, we've spent a lot of time talking about the results for OLEDs, but there are other TVs out there. So how do non-OLED TVs perform? Well, they too follow that inverse relationship, but there are some additional considerations. In the case of the Samsung QN900D, the 8K TV, the increased pixel density causes significantly more diffraction, it's a bit trippy, to say the least. Diffraction is also visible on the Panasonic W95A and the Sony Bravia 9. This diffraction will be noticeable if you have any light source directed at the screen, like ceiling pot lights or a lamp. For the most part though, non-OLED TVs tend to offer more of a spread in how they handle reflections. But if the light in your room has this big of an impact on black levels, what does it do to saturated colors? That is the question our final test answers. We retake the SDR color volume gamut rings as a baseline to compare. Then we remeasure the gamut rings again with the ring light on and the colorimeter directed in the center. This way we can capture what happens to colors in the presence of ambient light. We crank the TV to its max brightness for this test and take measurements with the ring light emitting 1000 lux and 3000 lux. The score for this test is based off the measurements at 1000 lux since that's the most representative of a bright daytime viewing environment. For the most part, TVs that raise their black levels in the presence of ambient light also see their colors desaturate in bright environments. TVs with wider native color gamuts can generally stand to desaturate their colors a little more though as their visible color saturation can still be higher in typical viewing environments than models with more limited color gamuts. Comparing the G4 to the S95D yet again, you'll see that though the LG has a bit more stability, it still outputs less saturated colors to begin with because it has a lower color volume overall thanks to the white subpixel. Essentially, this test combines the TV's color volume with its reflection handling capabilities to truly start to measure the impact a bright viewing environment has on a screen. 
So in turn, we can recommend you a more appropriate model. You might have noticed we added a new bright room usage to the top of our reviews. And this new addition is the direct byproduct of these four tests. But we aren't fully done with this testing suite. Sure, raw direct reflection handling is important when you're in a bright room, but a TV's brightness output also matters quite a bit. Even comparing the available lifestyle TVs out there, the canvas, the frame, and the next frame, you'll find that though they're all edge-lit models with matte screen finishes, in a bright room, the frame has a clearer image, likely because it gets brighter. The total impact brightness has on reflection handling is still under development, so stay tuned for future updates to our TV test bench. While I did get a bit into the results here, there's also a companion article over on the website that gets into the details of some of our results. So if you're interested in that, check out the link in the description below. Until next time, I'm Abby from Ratings.com, where we help you find the best product for your needs. Not from its screen finish. You can really see the difference that MLA mayor... Mayor? <laughs> the mayor of MLA town. The integrating sphere. <laughs> the sphere of integration. Uh, we'll show you what we...